Hi, in this video we are going to learn how to use the Infogistics jQuery client side text editor control and what different options you have in order to configure it for your applications. What I have is a blank Visual Studio 2010 MVC project and I'm going to come down to my project and add a new HTML file. And I'm going to call this IG text editor. So in my blank HTML page, I'm going to bring in the necessary scripts and CSS references so that I can instantiate and uh, work with my client side code. So as you can see that I'm getting the jQuery core and jQuery UI, which are the dependency on the Infogistics client side code uh, and controls. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the Infogistics JavaScript file. Then I'm going to go to the contents folder and uh, grab the CSS so that my text editors look nice. And the last CSS I need is jQueryUI.custom. So these five references are all I need in order to get started and working with the client side code. In the body here, I'm going to create three div elements for the three different modes that the text editor supports. First, it's going to be just the simple text editor. I'm going to ID it text editor. Add another div element and set up an ID to be text area. And the last div element and ID it as password. You can also use input elements directly. So you don't have to use a specific element, so to speak, in this case, div element, to convert that into an infogistics infogist control. You can use an input element and wrap that around the jQuery plugin, and it would render it as the infogistics text editor control. So in here, I am going to fire off the jQuery onload function, which gets fired any time there, the page is being loaded. And I'm going to start off grabbing the first element, which is the text editor below, and convert that into a IG text editor. Once I do that, I pretty much have taken this element right here and converted it into a client side in Progistics jQuery control which is the text editor. Now in here, I can just go in here and add some options to my text editor control. Since I haven't wrapped this inside of a script tag, which is why I wonder why I'm not getting IntelliSense, so I'm going to do that real quick so that it runs OK and also I get some IntelliSense support as much as I can. So um, in the text editor option, the first thing I want to do is I want to set the null text property, which is basically if there is nothing to um, or there is nothing to start with, it's going to show a value in there for the user to be prompted and, and, and enter the enter the value. So I want to say enter some value, and then I'm going to set it to be required so that we have some validation built into these uh, controls, and I'm going to use make use of that true and I want these validation to be fired as soon as the user leaves the control. So what I'm doing here is I'm basically setting it up that the validation uh, is required first of all and the option is that anytime there's an on blur event being fired off of this control just fire off any validation that it needs on this control. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the other element, which is the text area, and do the same thing with it. Convert that into an IG text editor control. And in here, um, I need to set a text mode property or an option to be multi line. And by default, I didn't have to set it here because by default it's a single line input box control. And by doing it multi-line, it converts that into a text area. 
and let me set up a height property to it so that we can see, um, see the height of the multi line and let me, let me set a value to be this is a multi line text editor. All right, let's go to the last div element and convert that into a password element. Now let me show you how we do that. So get the last password element, calling the IG text editor wrapper on it. So that we have now converted that development into an emphasis jQuery client set editor control. And we're going to go in there and just set this property text mode equals password. So we go back in here, just kind of a summary. We, we added three div elements, text editor, text area, and password. And then we went in here in the jQuery onload function. We grabbed those three elements. The first one, we set the null text on it so that uh, the get, user gets prompted about uh, to what to do with that editor control. Uh, required is set to true, and validation option is set to be on blur. The next thing is that we went to the text area element and then converted that to be a multi-line, a height, and a value, a predefined value in there. And the last element is a password element right here, and we basically uh, converted that into an Info six jQuery editor control, which accepts password. So we right-click on this and view that in the browser. And as the page came up, you can see that by default, it's showing me the null text, and there is no text in the editor box, and there's some value. Uh, this is the text editor uh, with multi-line, so you can see that the default value gets a multi-line uh, support. And the, the one on the right hand side is the password field. So as I type in something, it's not going to show the user entry because it's a password mode text editor. Uh, in here, we also set some validation rules. So if I type in something and move off of it, it's going to be fine. But let's say if I remove everything and try to move off of it, it's going to show me the validation error. Yeah, for some reason, it didn't come up. OK, so I need to fix this because it's not validation options, but validator options. Um, and let me run it again. Now let's try tabbing out of it. And here you get the built-in validation pop-up, uh, letting the user know that the field is required. And if you type in some stuff, the validation is going to go away immediately. So in this quick video, you saw that uh, you have three different modes for the Infogistics jQuery text editor control. The default entry, the multi-line, and the password mode, a bunch of options, including validation. Thanks for watching the video. Infragistics. On the web at infragistics.com.